stay tuned. Mother Angelica is going to tell us the story of how she got into the business of printing her own mini books. That everyone I knew needed basic spirituality. And most of the books written in the past centuries were too deep, too expensive, and just not available. So the Lord began to give me these books. And they began really at the basis of the spiritual life up to the very height of contemplative prayer. They're free. And it's a very wonderful gift I will share with you. It's, it's like something, somebody turns a light on in my mind. And sometimes a book will be on paper in three, four hours. And it's a, a very wonderful gift for which I thank God, but I know it's all for you, for all the people in the world. And this is how we began our little apostolate. We might, do we have some time here now? I guess it's, we don't have any time, huh? Hmm? We have a little time? Yes. Just a little bit? <laughs> Hey, we'll get this candy tomorrow. I'm going <laughs> to... When we, the Lord began to give us these books, I'll never forget. I had this old manuscript in my hand. And I went to a printer, and he told me how much he charged, and I said, I'll take 10000 I came home, and I said to the sisters, I ordered 10,000 books, and they said, Lord, where are we going to put them? And what are we going to do with it? And I just want you to know that now we give away 14000 a day. But a time came around when the printer who printed these books couldn't do it any longer. And um, so we decided we would do it ourselves. And we didn't know a piece of typeset from a bottle of ink. Just dodo. Dum dum. <laughs> and everyone we'd ask would say, You can't do that. You crazy? You gotta be a journeyman for two years. And I said, What's a journeyman? <laughs> so they proceeded, but I was very confused. And so I thought, Well, sisters, are we or not? And they said, Sure. You see, we were too dumb to know we couldn't. <laughs> so I went to this big uh, print, printing equipment company, a beautiful showroom and lots of presses and all kinds of things. And I walked in with Sister Regina, who was our driver, and I walked in and I said, I would like to buy a press. The girl looked at me and she said, just a moment, please. She went to get a salesman, and he said, may I help you? I said, yes, I would like to buy a press. And he said, what kind? I said, I don't know. <laughs> well, what do you want to do? I said, I'm going to print these books. And I gave him seven or eight of them, and he said, four colors? I said, yeah, I guess. He said, well, how much experience do you have? I said, none. <laughs> he said, are you serious? And I said, yes, I'm serious. You want to sell me a press or don't you? He said, yes. So he took me through and he got the manager. He couldn't believe his eyes, you see, or his ears. And he came out and I looked at this press. looked like the smallest one in the room. And um, I said, how much is that? That doesn't look too complicated. He said, $9,000. I said, I'll take it. Well, Regina, we only had 200 in the bank. <laughs> there was a high chair there, and Regina was sitting on it, and I wish I had a high chair to show you, but when I said I'll take it, she began to swing. <laughs> got a little pale on the face. But I went on like 
think I was in my right mind. So I said, what else do I need? He said, well, you need a cutter and a folder. And I said, okay. So we went around, and cutters are huge, you know. I said, how much is that? And he said, 3800 And I said, I'll take it. <laughs> so we went around and looked for a folder. And I said, how much is that one? And he said, 900 And I said, I'll take that. So we walked out, and Regina said to me, do you know what you've just done? I said, yes. And she said, where are we going to get all that money? I said, oh, that's simple. We we'll just go to the bank. Everybody else does. <laughs> and we went to the bank. That's the bank, that's the bank, that's the bank. <laughs> no one would loan us the money because we didn't have collateral. And I say to them, I got a monastery paid for. And this one banker looked at me and said, Mother, I can't take a monastery on co as collateral. I said, why not? He said, if you default, this town will kill us if you take that monastery. <laughs> I said, who's going to default? He said, Mother, would you mind telling me what your assets are? I said, if I had any, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> he looked very condescending, like bankers do. He said, well, would you mind telling me what your monthly income is? And I said, well, I won't know that till the end of the month. He's acting like a typical man, and he says, Well, Mother, let me explain it this way. <laughs> How many parishes do you have, and what do they give you? I said, We don't have any parishes. We're a monastery. So he's totally desperate by that time, and he says, do you expect me to loan you money on faith by any chance? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> he said, do you expect me to go before the board of directors and tell them that I have loaned you $10,000 on faith? I said, yes. He said, I can't do that. I said, you pagan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was about a week before this stuff was going to be delivered, and I was just beginning to bite my nails and talk to the Lord real fast. <laughs> and finally, some man came to visit Sister David. Sister David is my mother. She's in a wheelchair. She's also a nun. He was out there talking to her, and I went out there, and by, I was getting a little bit facetious, and so I passed him on the shoulder. I said, hey, loan me $10,000. And he said, okay. <laughs> I said, are you joking? He said, no, are you? I said, I was, but I'm not now. <laughs> You know, by 3 o'clock, he went and borrowed that money himself on his own name, and we had that money by 3 o'clock that afternoon. And he said to me, can you pay it back by January 15th? And I said, I can't, but the Lord can. And the Lord did. Well, you know, Printing equipment, I said to the people who were discouraging us, they said, Mother, you're gonna, never going to learn this thing. And I said, Look, we have to learn it. If it takes us more than 20 minutes, we've had it. <laughs> you know, it took us exactly 20 minutes. <laughs> and two weeks later, I said to Sister one day, Why don't we do this four color cover? 
And she said, how do you do it? I said, I don't know. You just put one color on top of the other. And she said, won't it blur? Well, I said, we'll just fuss around with it till it doesn't. You know, you've got to have little eye things that see God. So you know that. Well, we were just in the, just finished the second color. It was beautiful on top of, you know, the, the paper. Here comes the service man just to check out us. They couldn't believe what we were doing. We did 3,000 sheets the first day we got it. You know what I told? I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, in the Old Testament, when you wanted your temple built, it says that you gave talents to do all kinds of beautiful things for your temple to men who had no talent. Well, now is your chance to go to jail. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> but he came in and he looked and he said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know, we're just doing a little four-color job. <laughs> He said, you can't do that. I said, sure, why not? Just put one car on top of the other. He said, you mind if I stay and watch you? <laughs> oh, I said, be my guest. Have a cup of coffee. And we did it. Wasn't perfect, but it was passable anyway. Well, after we began, we realized that we needed other things like a camera. And a dark room, and a sink, and negatives, and plates. So I said to the sisters one day, sisters, we are going to get a camera. And they said, hold it, hold it. <laughs> we can't do camera work. I said, why not? He said, oh, you got all that exposure and timing. I said, oh, in this atomic age, there must be some simple thing where you just push a button and bingo. So I called up the man and I said, you got a, a, a camera that you just push a button? He said, yes, we call it Simple Simon. <laughs> I said, are you being smart? <laughs> he said, no, that's what they call it, but it's no good. But I do have one that's very simple. You push a button and literally you, everything is finished. He said, but it's very expensive. I said, how much is it? He said, well, just the camera's 4500 I said, I'll take it. <laughs> I learned in our life that the Lord never provides until we are in debt, but I think that's logical. <laughs> Why should he give you something when you don't need it? I think his father's falling off his chair back here. <laughs> so, we got this, and the, 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 ta the uh, sink came. Well, see, I never dawned on us to measure the doors before we bought the sink. <laughs> I didn't know what a you know, a developing sink looked like. But it was nine feet long and, and very wide. So the man comes with three other men in this truck and he ramps on the door, a good friend of ours now. He said, I came to deliver this sink, but he said, I got news for you, it isn't gonna fit. And I said, why not? He looked at me and he said, you see that sink on the truck? I said, yes. He said, it's too wide. I said, have you tried it? He said, you realize how heavy that is? Do you want me to pick it off the truck and try it? I said, well, how are you going to know? <laughs> and he said, look, mother, every time somebody says, look, mother, I know what's coming. He said, look, mother, it's too big, you see? Too big. Small door, 
big feet. <laughs> I said, let's try it. But this time he was really getting hot under the collar. I could see that his face was getting a little red, you know, and the other two men were embarrassed. I said, try it. He said, okay, okay, okay. So they pulled the, the, uh, the truck up to the delivery door. We opened the door as wide as they could open. And he looked at me and he said, now do you see? I said, let's pray over it. He said, pray over it. I looked at him and said, oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> so by that time, they had the back of the truck down, and they started, and I prayed a storm up. <laughs> we had a half inch to spare. <laughs> and we kind of had a camera to take their look, you know, on their faces. <laughs> Let me tell you what else the Lord did. He fixed him good. <laughs> When they got it in, they had it turned the opposite direction. <laughs> See, he was so sure it wouldn't fit, he didn't realize how he took it off the truck. <laughs> so he, oh, this was hilarious, but I didn't laugh at the time because he didn't look like he was <laughs> I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I said, just turn it around. <laughs> By that time, he had weakened beyond words, and he said, would you like to tell me how? I said, sure. I said, you see, you just take this end, and you pull it up this way. While it's standing up, just turn it around. <laughs> so he did it at work, and he looked at me, and he said, this place gives me the jeebies. Something's happening at our house. <laughs> Not too long ago, the Lord gave me a little book called Holiness in a Nutshell. Just a little tiny thing you can put in your pocket. We got the very bright idea of making it in mini book size, and all we have to do is slit it in half. Well, that was fine until we began to slit it in half. We put it under the cutter and put all these little books up there, and when you, by the time you got the the weight down, all the ones in the middle went <laughs> <laughs> So we, we labored under that for a while, and so I, I said to the sisters, there must be some kind of machine that slips. <laughs> so I called up, and by this time, they'd never argue with us anymore. <laughs> To Bob, do you have a slitter? He said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I said, will I slit many books? He said, if you say so. <laughs> Anyway, 
we got this splitter, and we got the biggest one they had. The same man that put the sink in and <laughs> came to deliver it. Uh, he looked a little bit disturbed when he walked in with it. And I said, hi, and he says, hi. <laughs> I said, how do you like our new scooter? Isn't this a fantastic idea? He looked at me straight in the eye and he said, you bought a pig and a poke. <laughs> well, I don't understand these southern things. I never heard about a pig and a poke. I don't know what a poke is. But I took it. It wasn't very good. I said, what's the matter with it? He said, mother, let me show you something. Well, he took a little mini book and this machine has a little roller, say, here. See? And your mini book was here. He looked at me and he said, you see, the roller is here. The roller pushes the paper. The book is here. Roller, paper. <laughs> I looked at it and I said, did you try it? <laughs> He said, Mother, look, roller, <laughs> paper, there's nothing to push it through. I said, but you didn't try it. <laughs> I said, let's pray over it. <laughs> he said, there's no amount of prayers that's going to push two things out. logical that if the roller was here and the book was here, it wasn't going to go through. <coughs> so I really prayed up another storm, and I said, well, let's try it. It won't hurt. So I picked up a pile of these books, 25 of them, and I put them down, put on the machine, put my finger on the top, and... <laughs> he looked at it, he said, do that again. <laughs> Just like a machine gun, they were just all over the floor and all over the place. He said, what happened? I said, they went through. <laughs> Here we found, see how the Lord works? Don't ever, ever shortchange the Lord. Don't ever l let your faith be lessened by the impossible. What happened was that when I put 25 books on the top of the roller, the roller pushed this book in front and then pushed the next one in back of it, and each book pushed the other one through. The, the, uh, then he called the company who makes the machine about a little part, and he said, they're running a book three by six, and the man said, it won't run. <laughs> he says, don't tell me it won't run, it's running. <laughs> I tell you these things, because the task before us today is impossible and miraculous. The task before you as a Christian or a charismatic Christian or Catholic is to build and to change this world and to change yourself, transform yourself, transform this world. You can do it with his grace. He will do it with you. 
if you put yourself before the Lord as Gideon's army, if we determine that we shall be holier day by day, we shall build up our church, we shall build up our priests, we shall build our diocese, we shall build our churches, we shall forget our factions and ourselves, and we will love each other. We will spread love, we will be love, we will be lights in the darkness. And together we shall overcome, and we shall be holy, and our church shall be vibrant and full to the brim once more. Praise God.